Well, welcome. How are y'all? <laughs> How y'all this morning? Warm? We're warm, safe, and dry. Well, um, interestingly, my profession is I'm a professional speaker and author, so standing in front of you doesn't bother me. The topic, though, is new. It's different. Uh, last year, my brother and I decided, based on personal experience, bo uh, both our in-laws having issues with aging in place, that we would start a company that looked at how to do this in a way that's, well, more than just construction, that looks at the real goal, which is to keep people in their homes five to seven years longer. And so we've looked at the research, what causes, what are the major causes of people not being able to stay in their homes, which is a huge issue. Uh, sat with a researcher just last week through the Minnesota S Aging Services uh, Convention. I, we spoke four times there. And this friend of ours who's a researcher came up and said, you know, the number one reason people fall is intermittent sleep. They put these watches on people that determine whether they were sleeping or not, which is kind of interesting. And even though people on average were in their beds 12 hours a day or 12 hours during a 24-hour period, on average they only slept deeply one or two times. And when we sleep deeply, that makes the difference. So, so the point is that as we looked at aging in place, we started to look at what does the research tell us about what we should be doing. Yes, there's some simple things we'll talk about, but we're going to look at more advanced things like sensors and things that I think would have uh, certainly extended my mother-in-law's life uh, based on her not being able to communicate to others when she fell, for example. And so. Uh, but I think you'll find this interesting. We're, we're uh, out of Lakeville. It's called Aging in Place Midwest. So our question is, what are some of the issues that you have or what are the needs you have? What do you want out of this? And most of the people, when we asked them and looked at the research, this is what they were looking for. And we go into homes and talk to people about what are the issues? Do a, a, a free assessment and kind of help people understand and talk about what are the issues. So one is moving around more freely, moving around more safely. Uh, getting in and out of the bathtub and shower, is that an issue? The older I get, the closer I get to 60, and my right knee is made by DuPont, so it's not easy to get in and out of things. Uh, reduce movement strain. Use kitchen appliances safely, big issue. Uh, interestingly, with the more, when we go into homes, we always ask people, how much of your home is not used anymore? And you're paying the taxes on the whole thing. A lot of people say, I haven't been upstairs in a couple months. <laughs> Or the kitchen is kind of a microwave and a freezer. Why? Well, you know, I just, I can't reach things. I can't. So we'll look at ways to help the people in your lives or yourselves as you, as you do this for modeling, which is great stuff downstairs. But to add the eye of when we get older, what does it look like? What should it look like? What are those things that in five years we'll say, gosh, I'm glad I put that in? Even simple things like grab bars. Uh, that are toilet paper holders instead of a grab bar that just falls when you, or a toilet paper holder that falls. It isn't when you are trying to get up, it's when you're falling. What do you grab for? A towel bar? If that towel bar isn't a grab bar, it's a f you're on the floor. So part of this is how do you look at it in, in a, a, and say, yeah, it might be a few bucks more right now, but I'm telling you, in five, ten years, you're going to say, oh, gee, I'm so glad we did that. Use it every day. And we did that without my in-laws and with uh, grab bars. And interestingly, it was, we don't need those, my father-in-law. We don't. Rrr, rrr. And for a decade and a half, it was, thank you. That makes all the difference in the world. So it's kind of getting ahead of this. We're trying to, as we put it, lay track ahead. Uh, problematic says, let's wait until the problem happens, and then, then we'll come in and we'll It'll cost you lots of money, but we'll make all these fixes for you. Let's look at it as, as opposed to 
pushing you out there is lay track ahead. What's going to happen? So we'll give you the experiences of a lot of different people and a lot of research that will indicate for you what would be appropriate and what are some good ideas. Some other things, um, let's see, more stable around the sink seems to be a big issue. A lot of people, when we go to their kitchens, we look for water around the sink, and there's always something there, like right under, or, and that just indicates, you know, that in essence, if you can't see very well, Water can be, go where you don't see it. Uh, and there's other places uh, that's an issue. Cook with less stress, monitor home safety, add wheelchair accessibility. Do that before it becomes an issue. Uh, get up and down stairs easily. We're just looking at a group and uh, where are they? With the stair climber? Oh, short view. Shore view, yeah, that has a curved stair. So how do you do that? Because the cost of a curved stair, a little more than just a straight line, uh, how do you add an apartment downstairs that's accessible? Dale's done that in his home and uh, really great results. So, and seeing better at night because that seems to be a huge issue for a lot of people. So, so our mission is to help generations come together to keep seniors in their homes safer and longer. One of the things we want to do is help all generations get together on this and say let's uh, transfer uh, a little knowledge as well as transfer a little heritage. It isn't just, well, let's wait until the, uh, the, uh, the issue becomes critical and now we have to move, now we have to, you know, is it possible or make that decision between staying here and going into long-term care or assisted living or memory care or whatever. So, um, wait, uh, we believe strongly in the value of educating seniors, caregivers and family members about best <coughs> senior living practices. We're also dedicated in improving the lives of our clients through in-home assessments, the application of universal design principles, which is a whole big study and, and wonderful information on how do you create something for all generations. E even in terms of raising the value of your home. We get a lot of people say, you know, it really raised the value of our home because more people can buy our home. Uh, and then last, um, remodeling capabilities and, s and smart senior living products and monitoring services. So we're also into how do you monitor people electronically with sensors and and other things that'll help them uh, stay in their home longer. And, and also give you, if you're, let's say, the, the daughter or son, you get more actionable information. When you find out that the door has been opened at two and three and four in the morning, the front door, because you have a sensor there, it's much more actionable than where, well, how was your night, mom? And you know that mom, or there's sensors now that collect data as to how often people move. You say, you know, mom hasn't moved in the last eight hours, hasn't left the bed, whatever. Now we can, we have that information and it's saying, yeah, it's more actionable. It's more, you know, what's really happening. So um, all that said, next, do you have anything next? Oh, so how does it impact your partner or caregiver when you're proactive about improving these living conditions? That's the issue. We have a lot of people being caregivers for the first time and I don't know if they really understand the toll uh, there's a lot out there on the toll of it. In fact, go to the next slide, it'll give you an example. Caregivers have higher levels of depression and are twice as likely to experience chronic illness as non-caregivers. Why? They see it often as a marathon. Don't search out help. Even people we talk to that are in the business, you say, well, what does the VA have? I don't know. They come to find out the VA has like $2,000 a month worth of services they can provide. That's what I think Dale, Dave, my brother's uh, uh, in-laws found out. They didn't know that. So there's a lot out there, but a lot of it is just making sure that, that uh, we're using those services that will reduce the, the issues caregivers might have. Um, caregivers age 50 plus experience an estimated $303,880. Boy, that's a pretty specific number. I'm not sure where I got that. But in lost income over a lifetime due to caregiving. They're not at work. They're, they have to take different hours and maybe a lesser job or a different job or change their career. Why? Because they have to take care of their, their family members. And the number one transition that may or causes that transition is... Um, falls. So as soon as that fall happens, as soon as someone breaks their hip, you know the deal. So on average, after 60 years old, people fall roughly three times a year. So 
three times a year. So if, I know there's a lot about seniors and falling, but a lot of it is what have you prepared? How have you prepared the home so it doesn't happen? We go into a lot of homes and, and there's someone who has maybe demacular generation, can't see very well, and they're grabbing every soft piece of furniture along the way and they have their specific path. And I say, what if someone puts a bag there? Oh God, I don't know. I mean, that would be, <laughs> so it's just very interesting how a lot of this, if you go in and analyze it, you know, We'll also talk about the barriers and questions you might have as we go through this of how do you talk to maybe a parent or that doesn't, is resistant, because that's the first thing we get, deal with is resistance. You know, I don't need help, and, and this isn't about help. This is about being proactive and laying track ahead to make sure that you stay in there five or seven years longer. If you just truly believe you want to be independent, a little advice will help. So. All that said, I'm Jack Mattafee. This is my brother Dale. He's off to the next stage. Dale is a licensed contractor. And so he, he, he and I deal with this a lot in terms of going into homes and, and actually making these changes. But he'll be continuing the next port, portion. C'est pour vous. He's much older, <laughs> wiser. Yeah. wiser. How does this work? Just put it up anywhere. Flipper. Jack's done a lot better since uh, I think I was about 10, 10 years old, threw him down the stairway a couple times. He's done a lot better <laughs> since then. It's been a good thing. But uh, we, we came into this w for very personal reasons. I have a 92-year-old father-in-law, and his wife is 88. They're still living in their own home as, up until uh, for two weeks. Then we moved them to independent living, and then they'll move to assisted living because Mary Bell is now um, legally blind. Between, between the two of them, they have one good eye. <laughs> and Wally is a Marine. You know, he's 92, had his way pretty much all his life, and uh, tried to get the keys away from that guy. It, 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 it wasn't easy. So we said, Dad, we're taking you to, down to the DMV. I know that's the old term for whatever the new term is, but we took him to the DMV to, to, to get the eye test, right? And so we sit him down in front of the, they sit him down in front of the, the chart and uh, say, well, okay, Wally, what do you, you know, can you read the chart for me? And he goes, M, three, six, Z, W. I'm sorry, Wally, but there are no numbers on the test. So, so Wally did not pass this test. But he still said, well, my license is still good until the end of the year. This was June, right? My license is still good to the end of the year, right? I I'm afraid not. No, we have to take the keys away. So he was still giving us a hard time about it. And my wife said, well, we're going to take you to your eye doctor. And uh, so we sat down with the eye doctor, and she asked the eye doctor, she said, well, knowing what you know about his eyesight, would you like him to be on the road with you? And he said, hell no. Do not want to be on the road with this guy. So we took the keys away. One other little story I'll tell you. Uh, we told the neighbors, if you ever see Wally out there on his ladder, because he loves to put his Christmas lights up, and he's, you know, he's, he's very particular about how those lights are. They all have to be perfect. I know I tried to do it for him once. And it, yeah, okay. Had to do it over like three times. Anyway, we get a call. I said, anytime you see him on a ladder, give us a call. The neighbor calls us. You'll never believe what I'm looking at. Okay, so Mary Bell is 88. She can't feel her feet. She has frequent uh, dizziness and vertigo, and she can't see. And Wally has you know, got macular degeneration, one eye, and he has Parkinson's. So she said, I'm watching la uh, Wally on the ladder, and Mary Bell is steadying it for him. <laughs> okay, so that's how we decided we better learn a lot about this now, right away. Um, as Jack said, the first thing, the, the number one uh, danger to folks living in their own home uh, after age 65 is falls. There are some very simple things. Get, get a piece of paper, write down whatever you, you might not be familiar to. Go ahead and use this piece of paper on the back. We'll give you a new one for evaluation if you want. But I'm going to go through 
all the cheap, easy, and free stuff you can do in your home to make it safer. Okay, use that stuff, use the backside, whatever you need to do. So number one, these are easy, free, and cheap things you can do in your house before you get to the construction phase. It's not going to be up here. It's going to be here, so we're going to go with this. Number one, you want to walk on solid ground. Remove clutter, remove cords. If you have, you know, older pets sometimes don't move when you see them going to st when you're going to step on them. I've heard many stories of people tripping on their pets, so might be time to evaluate that. Toys, obviously, anything that's on the floor that that's a transition, that's a bump or whatever, you can get this nice all kinds of duct tape nowadays checkered, you can get chartreuse, you can get purple, whatever, but put, put that down on the floor if there's a transition that you can't see. The eye, obviously you can't see very well as you, as if you have macular degen or cataracts or any of the number of things that are issues. Um, there is a no slip wax if you have hardwood or linoleum. Anybody here have hardwood, linoleum that they're dealing with? There's a no slip wax you can put down. My sister has hardwood steps. She's fallen twice now. She's 62, fallen twice on her slippery, highly polished hardwood steps. There's 3M strips you can put down. There's a product called Shark Grip that you can mix in with the polyurethane and just spread it down. And it, you can't even see it, but it provides a gripping surface, OK? Uh, there are 3M grip products for your tub and your shower. You're all aware of those, right? You, you just dry off the shower tub, you lay them down. Um, again, highlight transitions in the floor. If there's a, any kind of a change in levels in the floor, try to make a contrast with either tape or something that will allow your eye to see that easier. Um, I've, did I mention uh, getting rid of all your throw rugs? Just either get rid of them, tape them. I've, I know some people have taped them down because they love them or they're even the rubber grip ones are good if they have a fairly stiff backing. That's a much better way to go, OK? He disagrees with this, but I like to use salt shakers on my sidewalks because they're lightweight. I don't have to dip into the bag. I don't have to carry a 20-pound bag around. I just take the salt shaker, and they're real cheap, right, 50 cents, and spread it around. I know it's not exactly the right kind of salt. But they're lightweight, they're easy to use, you can have six of them around the house and you probably avoid a fall. The next thing you can do is to light, to light your home better. Uh, night lights are really important in hallways, in bedrooms, in the bathroom. They're very inexpensive, almost free. You can use higher wattage light bulbs in the light bulbs, that, you know, in, the, in your lamps. Uh, those three-way lights, uh, my, my in-laws are fond, fond of those, right? They turn those and get exactly what they like. Uh, a flashlight by the bed is really a very good thing to have. Uh, you might have, obviously, if you have a power outage, you probably already have some kind of flashlights or a light source from that. Uh, and there are those battery-operated stick-on-the-wall button lights that you hit with your hand and they go on. That's helpful for a closet a place that's not very well illuminated now. Uh, fire safety, the, again, the, the second most common uh, problem that people have in their homes uh, is, a, is a fire that causes a major damage, major problem uh, for, for the elderly. Because if you can't see well, you don't know if the stove is on. We got a call from our in-laws saying, you know, uh, maybe you ought to come and help us here because we just had a fire on our stove. And it wasn't in a pan. It was all the crumbs and stuff that had overflowed from previous cookings that had ignited. And would, but they, because they can't see, they couldn't see it because the burners are black and it's black. And so it's a, it's a vision thing. Um, this is from the National Fire Prevention Agency. Number one, smoke outside if you can, OK? Change smoke alarm batteries on your birthday. That's do yourself a favor. Uh, you all know what carbon monoxide detectors are. You can plug them in. You can buy them for 20 bucks and plug them in. And then it will detect if there's a problem with your furnace and you will live through it. 
Uh, fire extinguishers, if it's a type B extinguisher, that'll take care of a grease fire. Type K is even better than that. Uh, don't wear your nice scarf while cooking. Stay in the kitchen while frying food. We almost burned my house down, didn't we? <laughs> There were chicken fritters that we got from a road merchant anyway, and I was cooking them in deep fat. We decided to go sit down and watch TV while they were on it. I left the pan on. I did. I left the pan on. All of a sudden, it's, it ignited, uh, scorched the bottom of the, the uh, microwave, and, you know, and okay, I'm too poor to pay attention. We'll go from there. So stay in the kitchen when you're frying the food. If you do have a grease fire, the worst thing you can do is put water on it, as you know. Put a lid on it. In order to kill a grease fire with uh, a baking soda, you need to dump the whole box on. So it's nice to have a couple boxes in your refrigerator anyway. Just rip the lids off now so that you can grab it and dump it on. If you use the fire extinguisher, you'll contaminate the whole kitchen and create a major problem. So, but if you have to do it, do it. Plan an escape route. Again, that's from the National Fire Prevention Agency. And just in general, um, to make life easier, place, this is free stuff you can do, place items that you use between here and here, that you use often, in the kitchen. Put all the stuff you use, don't make it so you have to bend over and reach up high, because those, that's when you get into trouble. Take the ladder away if you need to from whoever you might need to. We took the ladder from Wally and Mary Bell. He found another one though, I don't know. <laughs> he keeps coming up with them, I don't know. Uh, use that tape that I mentioned on the floor and add it to the countertop edge. That's a really good thing. Or we painted, we have a, a, a outside porch, outside uh, steps and deck and all that stuff. And we painted the, the edge, just took a roller and did white paint on the edge of the steps. And to keep it safe and it, everybody's gone, wow, that's a great idea. Well, it, it, it's worked and it, it works really well. So if you can see the transition, much easier to deal with. Um, obviously wipe up spills immediately. Anybody else have any other ideas that have worked for you? When you were saying the salt shaker, use a Parmesan cheese container for a little salt. Oh, that's a great salt. idea. Oh, you can use the bigger stuff? I bet, I bet. Parmesan I salt shaker? That's a great idea. Parmesan yeah, cheese, cheese thing. Just take the, make sure, use the cheese first. See, we, I've had the same Parmesan cheese thing for like 20 years because we use like little, so much, so little of it, you know. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about some construction type stuff that you can do in your house. It's going to cost you some money but it will return a great, uh, you'll get a good return on it as you go ahead. Um, one of the things that happens when we get older is we lose the ability to grab the door. And if you put this kind of a door handle on, it makes it so much easier for you and for everybody to get in and out. Yes, yeah, sometimes you wear these jeans, you get, you, know, you get caught on it, but as you walk by, it's happened. If you need to open a door wider and get it more out of the way, this is a kind of a hinge that you can put on without changing the width of the doorway. Lighting on the stairway, you all have seen that, where you have these little lights on the stairway. These slides are kind of hard to see in the, in the light. but And you all know what this is. That's a GFI ground fault circuit interrupter. Nowadays they have tamper resistant ground fault circuit interrupters so that you, the child can, can't put a knife in that. So that's what you need to upgrade to if you haven't yet. Uh, obviously the carbon monoxide alarm is an expensive way. You just plug it in, the, plug it in to a, any outlet and this obviously is your smoke detector. But you can get, for $7, you can get a lighted switch that will, it, the little tab is illuminated. Oh, they, yeah, like this part would be illuminated and the part around it. We have a few of those in my house. It's just great, you know, <coughs> middle of the night, you get up, you can see where the switch is. That's a really helpful thing. In the garage, I see, uh, obviously, 
it's hard to keep your garages clean in the winter, but the best, you know, whatever you can do there is helpful. Uh, we recently installed more lighting. Uh, they had fluorescent lights in my father-in-law's uh, garage, and we added some new some uh, LED kind of lighting that comes on instantly, and it's very bright, and it provides them the ability because they couldn't they couldn't get out there and open their freezer and you know safely or take their garbage out or all those things that, that were necessary. Pardon? Painted all the walls white. Yeah, we also painted everything in the garage white so that they, you know, provided more light, finished the garage and all that good stuff. We often put, um, there's usually a couple steps up to the, the door. In addition to putting a rail there, we put a package shelf so that as you walk in, you can set the package, open the door with your elbow, as you mentioned, and walk in, carry your stuff in. It's a lot easier if there's a little package shelf there for stuff. Okay. Um, on the outside of the house, obviously, you're talking anything, uh, talking about lighting that's motion controlled. Y'all have done that. Nice to put that in inside the house sometimes too. <laughs> These are really cool. If you're in a in a position to uh, think rethink your kitchen stuff a little bit, these are shelves that you can grab and they come down, and then you can get your stuff and then you can put it up. Like I said before, if you can keep your usable area in a, between pretty much your waistline and your eyes, it's much easier to reach and you tend to stay out of trouble. Go ahead. And that's one of the questions we ask people. Do you want to, does anybody in the home want to work in the garage? Do they enjoy going out there and fiddling around? Yeah, but I can't reach all the stuff. All right, well, we have a solution for that. So. As you think about uh, accessibility, uh, the ramps that are available, obviously, you, most of the time we have to do a custom ramp for somebody if they need it. Uh, there are, if there are little transitions in the house and you're thinking wheelchair, there are even new products. It's a solid rubber thing that, it's a wedge that allows for an easy transition over any kind of a threshold. It's not a full step height, it's just about this high and it gradually gets bigger, so that's, this Obviously, having a little chair as you walk in the house, some place to sit, that's safe, that's not going to fall over to put your clothes on, get ready, go. Um, and then this, you, you all have seen these grippers for underneath the rug. I hope you're using them if you have to use a rug. <coughs> Again, we don't recommend a rug. Go ahead. All right, let's talk about the bathroom. This is... Uh, how many of you have bathroom projects you're thinking about? Okay. okay. The number one thing that you can do to help, you know, improve the safety of a bathroom is look at the, obviously look at the floor. And if it gets slippery when it's wet, you need to do something about that. Cover it with a, a rug that has a rubber gripper on it. Uh, we recently put bars in the bathrooms, both the bathrooms of their townhouse, uh, both so they can, a vertical one so that as they step in, they can hang onto it and they get out, and one that's lower so as he's on the john, they can reach it and grab it and help themselves up. And we also put the kind that, you know, over the, the uh, toilet seat, the bars that help you get up, and it's an elevated seat. And they told us that they, that helped them unbelievably. They can get in and out of the shower safely. They can get uh, up and off the toilet easily. Those are huge deals. The key, uh, the key thing when you do something like that is to make sure that you install that bar into the stud that's behind the wall, behind the drywall. Now. Every uh, grab bar kit that I've purchased recently also has the ability, gives you the ability, because those studs aren't always in the right place. It gives you the ability to drill a bigger hole and put a, a special fastener that they provide, at least the Moen bars that I've used, they provide that expands to a you know, pretty large size. So it will withstand a 200 pound fall. Yeah, these kind of anchors. 
They're a lot bigger than they look, but they hold a lot of weight. And they have been rated to handle, you know, somebody who's 200 pounds accelerating as they fall. I fell down, uh, the shower tub combination, I fell down, slipped in our tub, and we had a rack on the wall, and I grabbed for the rack, the rack came off the wall, and I was lucky that it didn't get hurt any worse than I did, and so we now have just a walk-in shower, and then our mother-in-law actually comes and lives with us, and w just as you had talked about, we have put up these temporary, we have another shower on the main floor, we put in these grab bars, so that she can get there, and then that extra height of the seat, but the bath and tub uh, or shower is really, that's a tough one, boy, when you get older, because yeah. there's something you can really fall. So that was just my point. Oh, that's very helpful. So you're saying that you grab for a towel bar? Yes, I grabbed for a towel bar uh, that was into the tile on the wall, and I mean, I grabbed it, and just, you know, of course, I'm a big guy, but it would be for anybody, broken half. And I was very lucky that yeah. I didn't really get hurt because it didn't do much good to just grab that bar that was, you know, fastened into the tile. And um, so, I mean, it, yeah, anything you can do to for the grab stuff is good. Right, to help you out. Okay, good. Any other experiences anybody's had? We hear a lot about people who grab for the, the towel bar as well as, the as Jack said, the toilet paper holder. Yeah. I've got towel bars over a whirlpool tub and they're made out of stainless steel and they're anchored firmly yeah. and they're equivalent to grab bars, maybe almost. And then okay. I've got grab bars and, and, uh, and grab bars angled and vertical. Good. And I'd find no problem getting in and out of the whirlpool and the grab bars just seem to me to keep it safe. Okay. So really thinking about where those grab bars should be seems to me to be really important. Right. The, go ahead. Uh, my mother-in-law, who recently passed away at the age of 101, um, oh well, she, she fell and she was in the hospital and she lived in a retirement community and while she was in the hospital, they came in and redid her bathroom, took out the tub and shower, put in a walk-in shower, and they put sliding glass doors on it. Right. That's what we that's have. What yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was terrible. Oh, really? As soon as she came home, the next day we had them in there taking those doors out to put a shower curtain in because she had to have an aide come in and shower her. And there was, and when she was on her her bench, in the shower, and there was no way that aide could get in and help her. Okay, so it, it limited access. Well, yeah. So putting in uh, sliding shower doors is not necessarily a good idea. Yeah, the walk-in. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Sure. The walk-in, the walk-in shower is the gold standard. That is what you want to get to if you possibly can. Don't have them step over a tub. The tub cutout is not all that great. great. I just got a call uh, about a month ago from a client who had fallen into his glass doors and they were now off the off of their rails, and they're looking at putting in a you know a shower curtain instead. So that might be a better way to go. Although the tendency is if you're falling is to grab the shower curtain too. So you you know you there's. Pardon? You don't want a no, you don't want a tension bar, bar holding the shower bar. No, sh holding the, the, the curtain rod. Okay. okay. All right. Let's. Um, and, and the other thing is maybe talk about the transition from the shower to the regular bathroom. It can be just level. Yeah. That's what we were just mentioning. Uh, and you all have uh, also, you know, the flatter, the, the the less obstructive that can be. It's called a zero clearance shower, right? You can roll a wheelchair roll. right in. Pardon? Roll in shower. A roll in shower. Those are ideal. Uh, I've heard a lot about the tubs, you know, and the, the biggest criticism I, I get about those tubs that have the door and you walk in is that you don't get enough water in them to really do much. And they're very expensive. Uh, for a little bit more, you can get a roll-in shower, you can put your chair in there, you can make it big enough, and uh, I'd also recommend those handheld shower deals so that you don't have to stand all day and uh, put yourself at risk. So, to just to step back a little bit, number one, put grab bars in. Number two, obviously make sure the floor is as flat as possible and as safe as possible, no slip. And the grab bars they have out nowadays are really 
beautiful. The ones that, uh, there, there are some Moen ones. I, did, I picked them up at Menards, and they look, they uh, have brushed nickel. You uh, can put towels on it. They have a little bar for towels underneath the main bar. So it's a towel bar and a grab bar. And they have the same thing for the toilet paper holder. So those are a couple of things that you can do. Here's some other ideas. Obviously, an elevated toilet seat. Um, that was greatly helpful for my in-laws. This is a valve that uh, for, uh, is that a flush water, valve? Water, just doing water with your hands. Yeah, just like under a, under a sink. These are universal design type products where you, you know, put your foot on it and the water comes out so you don't have to adjust it with your hand. Um, and this is a bar that you often see next to a toilet as well. It can be put anywhere. You could put it next to the bed. If somebody has trouble getting out of bed, um, they get, they're maybe they're suffering uh, with vertigo or dizziness or whatever. There's also a pole that goes floor to ceiling that can be installed. That as they step out, they can grab that and they have something solid. Because as Jack said, if you don't get enough sleep, uh, the other issue is if, you, if, you're, if you're taking more than four medications, they say that you're highly likely to have uh, dizziness. Uh, so go to your doctor and make sure that your medicines are all working together, that you're taking them at the right time, or it can create a problem for you just by what, which medications you're taking. Okay. Um, obviously, if you can't afford to remodel your house and take the shower out, you might be able to use a chair in the, in the tub. There are transfer uh, transfer boards that help you to slide from the outside to the inside make life a lot easier. Yeah, this is the toilet paper holder grab bar that I was mentioning. You just slide your TP there. Lit grab bars. Lit grab bars. That's, that's pretty cool. You can't see them, but they're lit. Let's talk about the kitchen. Anything else that you all do in the bathroom that you found helpful? The lighting obviously is important. Um, How important do you think a fixed shower head versus a telephone? Uh, that's a good question. How important is a fixed shower head versus uh, uh, the handheld guy that you can we're use? Having a You're having a disagreement. You're having a disagreement. Okay. I think we're going to have both. I think have both. Yeah. If you're sitting in the chair as you age, and you're not going to be standing. That handheld is going to be able. You're going to be able to use it. Better. Yeah. If you're sitting down in the chair or. Shaving your legs. I, I know you're, you've, it's been a while since you've done that. But uh, washing, your washing your hair. If you're sitting down, the handheld is so much easier. And, and you can always set the handheld up there and make it act like a stationary shower. So problem solved. We'll send the bill for the counseling. No problem. It's OK. Any you other? Also put a lower handle or a lower holder for it, too. Because as you get older and you sit, you're going to shower lower. Right. So There's it's all about transition. It can be fixed. So. There are units that you can adjust. You just slide the, slide the holder down a, a slide. There's a bar that it slides down on, and you can position it lower, or you can put it back up as you need to. OK? All right, let's, uh, what do we got? Kitchen stuff. As we mentioned, there's uh, these pull-down trays for the kitchen. You, you just reach up, and it pulls it down. You can grab it. These are drawers. It's just organizers. It's open under here so you can get his knees in and he's in a wheelchair. So this is a, a cool corner cabinet uh, arrangement that we use. to. So you have full access to everything in there. All of those uh, work. This is a shelf that slides in and out of a bank of cabinets. You've probably seen those uh, spice rack drawers that pull out next to the beautiful stove and all that good stuff in the high end. Pieces. Um, this is just an example of hanging stuff in a place where it's easy, easy to get to, easy to reach, as well as that. There's countertops. This is all universal design type stuff. Take your time and, and uh, you, if you're trying to get ideas for a home remodel of some kind, look up universal design. It incorporates the needs of basically everybody from birth to death. Everybody that might need a wheelchair, anybody that might have any kind of handicap, that's kind of what it's aimed at. This is a, a drawer type uh, dishwasher. You've probably seen those. Melee makes them. They make them all over the place. Um, this is a mixing stand uh, 
articulated shelf that the mixing mixer goes back down underneath the counter. It, it rides so you don't have to lift it. Nobody wants to lift those things. I like to eat what comes out of those after they work on them, you know, but. So you use it is the point. Right. The question, ask the people that you're living with, walk through the kitchen and say, what are you using and what aren't you and why? And you'll find most often, the reason they don't use the equipment is it's either too heavy, it's in the wrong place, or there's 15 steps. As we talk to older Americans, what we're finding is um, the issue is the mental gymnastics required to do that task. I love to bake, but, and then there's these 15 steps, the reasons they, that it's hard to just get out of the chair to even do it. Well, that's the point of, of literally aging in place design is to say, how do we get rid of those steps? I mean, you're, you're, you love to do this, why aren't you? Well, it really bothers my arthritis the next day if I lift flour or if I lift the, the, so all of these ideas are about how do you live more fully in that home? Not how do you exist and how do you watch the walls get small, you know, closer and closer in or the path get more worn that is the simplest. It's really about saying, hey, do you wanna go back to things you like to do? It's even backing up in people's lives and saying, what part of your life do you, do you miss? Well, I miss the third floor, okay, you know, or I miss being able to go out in the garage and kind of play around. Okay, let's make sure you do that. So part of this is you, if you're doing this for someone else or, you're, or yourself, say, let's look at this in terms of activities, not a bunch of features. You'll go downstairs and God love them, you'll have a thousand features and isn't that cool? And isn't that wonderful? But do those things, if you buy them, other than your neighbor going, that's really cool. Uh, do they turn into you using that more often, making it easier, making it more fun, making opening your world? Our job when we come into homes is to say, how big is your world and how can we make it bigger? Because too many people think their world is getting smaller. And that's what good technology should do. It should open up your world and possibilities and say, oh gosh, we can do that again. And we can make it safer. And that's why some people, according to research, don't take a shower or a bath for days. Why? It's too scary. Those are mental gymnastics. So that's the kind of questions I think are important to ask and put it in that context. I'm sorry, go ahead. Good, that was excellent, thank you. Furniture is often a problem. If you, if you can declutter a house, that's off, often helpful. We haven't talked about some of the major things you can do. Uh, if, if you do have wheelchair issues, then you might want to make your door openings bigger in, in your house, if, if that's necessary, if you move in that direction. Uh, the, the grab bar on the side of the bed is helpful. This is a, obviously a clothes rack that you can raise and lower easily. I don't know if you've seen those, they're really nice. Uh, again, another lighted, a lit, isn't that a lit switch? It should be. It's actually a switch that can... Um... I'm sure it does something cool. I've not used it. Anyway, this is a door opener. Automatic door opener. You push a button and it opens it for you. So th there are th those things available for residential. Whatever your needs might be. Everything that we do is custom, so we're showing some things that are available commercially as well, but some things we run into often, some things we don't. Again, the things that we run into most of the time are, I want a roll-in shower, as you mentioned. I want, a, I want to be able to use my kitchen more. I want to be safe going up and down stairways. That's the one thing we haven't talked about. Very often I will either put in a, we'll put a stair lift in or we'll put rails on either side, both sides of the stairway to make it safe. Those are uh, good things you can do. What else you got? Okay, now talk, let's talk about monitoring. Monitoring has improved vastly. Uh, did anybody have a, a pendant in their home or with their senior using an emergency alert pendant that says, help, I've fallen and I can't get up? I hope you're doing that. It, 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 imp it will improve your senior's sense of, of safety and comfort and in the home tremendously. It just, it just does that. If you can, there are tons of different services on the internet you can get, in, get into. 
The next level of home monitoring is where you put sensors in the home, as Jack was saying, that help you as the caregiver know what's going on there. And they also start at very simple stuff, like there's a, a one you can put in the bed that says, okay, mom hasn't gotten up for, it tells you, you know, that she hasn't gotten up, gotten up for eight hours, or as he said. You can put one in the, in the, the bathroom that says, that reads all the motion, you know, whether somebody's come in or gone, or has been, been there or not. Uh, one thing on stove safety, there's a product called Stove Minder, I think it's called, uh, that will, whether it's gas or electric, it's about 300 bucks and takes a little bit to install, but if that stove has been left on and is unattended for a certain amount of time, it will shut off the stove. So if you're worried about somebody, you know, and that was one of our concerns. We didn't have to do that, fortunately, but if, if somebody's going to be there and they have, they're maybe a little forgetful or they can't see very well and can't see that little red light that says it's on or it's hot, or that's a very, very good thing to do. Um, obviously, there's all kinds of health monitoring uh, stations that you can set up that if you're taking care of, anybody here taking care of somebody far away? That's a long way away, if you are. Uh, there are health monitoring uh, stations that you can set up that do blood pressure and diabetes type stuff and other kinds of, of tele telemetry and it tells you what's going on. The, uh, there's a, even a watch, you know, the pendants that you wear, they have watches as well that'll do the same thing. Uh, and they'll also, you know, heart rate and some of the other issues that people have. And that, again, it's about actionable information. Do you have information that's going to be worth talking about? Mom, you were up four times last night. Not, how was your night last night? Well, pretty good. You, you've gone all this your whole life and in trying to make sure that you took care of things. This is what taking care of things looks like in the next stage. We'll do it in an honoring way for all people involved. We'll make sure that, you know, the information is something that is actionable, that's useful. But it, we're not going to debate these things. If you haven't opened up your refrigerator in two days, we need to talk. That's worth noting. I mean, and part of this is the sensors, the, the sensors that we use and put in are all related, directly related to whatever the condition is. If it's Parkinson's, there is a, uh, a vibration sensor. So if someone falls, it senses that. If their blood sugar's down, you get a text. I mean, this right. isn't, I mean, it's kind of like, it's a totally different world, but it's all customized to that individual. It also collect the data, how often they've walked through the, through the living room. The blood sugar? Pardon me? How does it the blood sugar? Obviously, the, per, the, the patient has to uh, Prick. Prick. do, do that. On, yeah, so yeah. So, yeah. But, but let's say it's not automatic yet. Yeah, if they haven't done it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not a nasty watch that right. does that when you're just standing there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but also they Nails have it you. for, like this friend of ours has it for uh, her work for Emeritus is all about um, sleep deprivation. And so they have these watches on, uh, I think it's over 10,000 people. And when are they asleep? When are they awake? Because the heart rate changes. The body temperature changes when you're sleeping. It goes down about four or five degrees. So... A lot of different reasons for these, but the point is they collect a lot of data. You know, heart rate and uh, uh, blood, uh, you could do blood pressure with them even. There's well, a lot of points. even use these tools versus having somebody come into the home. Oh, you don't have to bring a nurse in. These right. tools can monitor. So these, these tools can help you monitor somebody remotely, whether you're across town, whether you're across the country. It can give you lots of information that you need. and you can set it up in such a way that it, it alerts the people you want it to have alerted. You don't always want to have the fire and rescue show up every time. So the first thing it might have is if, if mom hasn't been up for a while, hasn't used the bathroom for a while or whatever, it will send a text to you, to your cell phone, or send a text, an email to your sister or whatever. Whoever is taking care, you know, it can 
you can set it up to do any way, anything you like that way. Are there any specific questions you have about your particular situation that anybody wants to share? Then maybe we can address those. Because like I said, everything we do is, is so customized to, to primarily two things. One is the condition of the person that we're trying to serve and their particular medical issues. And the second thing is obviously the condition of the home. And we, you have to have those two things to be able to determine and help somebody uh, with their issues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. Just one thing in, in line with that is that um, people need to know there is no uh, like training or certification program for doing home modifications and accessibility. And it sounds like you have developed the expertise to do it correctly. But a lot of people might, you know, hire somebody to come in and build a ramp and the person could build a ramp, but they don't necessarily know what the correct slope is and right. how to make that a nice yeah. safe ramp for that house and that individual. And so people end up can end up spending a lot of money and getting a product that is not what they need. Mm -hmm. And so people just yeah. need to know that they really need to check with people that they hire to make sure that they know what they're doing and how to match the person to the house and make it effective for them. And whether it's a grab bar or a ramp or a whatever, those are the key ingredients. You, you know, you make it a, a And she's not my sister, okay? <laughs> All right, I, I, I've not met this person, I don't know. Nice compliment, but yeah. uh, on, that, on that order, thank you for the compliment. Um, we have we've studied it, that there are two things in play here. One is the American Disabilities Act which has very specific guidelines for how to make things happen. And the other piece is, as a you know, contractor for the state of Minnesota, we have a lot of requirements and rules that we have to follow as well. So that, that we most try never to people have, right. excuse me, have any clue of. I mean, we go in and like a lot of the contractors, you know, they go, they'll complain about what the last contractor did. It's always, they open the wall and they go, well, who did, you know. <laughs> well, we, what we like to do is come in and we have a free assessment. We'll just come in and for 45 minutes say, here are the things. And then a lot of times they'll ask us, give us a quote and we'll say, what's your budget? Because we'll do it stratified. Because we don't need to do seven years ahead stuff right now, but boy, if you put a uh, door between this room and that room, it, I mean, th you'll be so happy. And so we figure out what are those things initially, and gee, the, the son-in-law wants to come over, put some shark teeth on those, uh, on those uh, wood stairs. That'll really make a difference. That'll grab, help grab. Or, you know, our job is, is to educate. That's our number one you know, that's kind of my background is I own a company that designs training programs and we've designed all of 3M's, you know, leadership training worldwide and so, but it's how does the adult brain accept this information and the other part is how do you do it in a gracious way? How do you do it in an edifying way that says, honoring way. you have done a great job with this house. Let's make sure that it improves its value but also while you're here, you're here longer. And you're here and you, have, you use more of it and more comfortable with it. That's really our goal because on a personal level, that's what we have seen is the loss. And that's what causes the arguments because it's staged under my will and we get the, you know, the alpha daughter-in-law and God love her, but, or the alpha daughter who says, no, this is what we're going to do, mom, and you don't understand. And it's like, okay, you know, let's have a throw down later, but let's just talk right now about what are those things we need to do. And it's a totally different conversation when we come in. It really is. It's your decision. You know, I, I'm not here to tell you you can't, you can't go and live in assisted living. If you think their food's great and you don't like cooking, hey, I'm not here to judge that. But at the end of the day, it's, again, it's being qualified sometimes to come in after someone's done some work and saying, is this helpful? What would be the next step? So we kind of like to help people throughout the whole process just on the information side uh, because that's really, it's that mix of is it the right solution at the right price at the right time? Because a lot of this is timing, you know. If you grab for the bar, as you said, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, and how many times you do that and you say, God, a year ago I should have had that done, you know. I knew it. So, well, great, we'll come in you know, put the grab bar in and we don't have to do anything more. We've done a lot of that. Just come in and just, let's just take care of it now. 
And then, then the senior, all of us, we get a sense of, you know, this is a good idea. But also we get more aware of what is it we need. You know, how, do, now that I'm getting up more at night, uh, you know, I do need those uh, lights in the hallway to find my way to the bathroom. I, I didn't, you know, 10 years ago, but now I do. So I don't know if that's helpful. Other, other questions, points? We're over our time. We are, we are, yeah, we are interviewing for uh, Aging in Place Property Brothers. I know. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. And we're going to go for that. We're I think, go I think that. that'll be the, the thing we do. Um, any other quick questions that you have? Thank you all very much. You stayed awake the whole time I was talking. Thank you. Thanks. If you want more information, just, uh, you know, you can write down your name. We have a whole...